Uh, example three, moving into the uh, 6.2 assignment here. Um, the first two examples we rotated about the x-axis, now we're going to rotate around the y-axis. And um, the only difference is we want to make a dy integral instead of a dx integral. And that means that we want everything in terms of y instead of x. <coughs> uh, notice here it says y is equal to x squared. Uh, and then we have y equals 4 and x equals 0. All right, so we're looking to create a region here with those uh, three graphs. If we start off with, um, let me use some different colors here. Maybe I can, there we go. Let's go red for that. And go green for that. All right. So start off y equals x squared. If I just were to graph that, um, if I square what x is, 0 squared is 0, 0.5 squared is 0.25, I'm using a 0.5 scale on the x and the y axis, uh, 1 squared is 1, 1.5 squared is 2.25, 2 squared is 4, and I'm assuming that's as far as we need to go there. I go in the other direction, negative point, no, 0.5 squared is 0.25, negative 1 squared is 1, negative 1.5 squared is 2.25, negative 2 squared is positive 4. So if I were just to graph that, it looks like this. That's y equals x squared. If we look at y equals 4, y equals 4 is just going to be a horizontal line at a height of 4. That's what y equals 4 looks like. It actually has arrows on the ends of it. Right, so that green line is y equals 4. And x equals 0 is simply a vertical line right here. All right. So we're looking at a region created by the 3 we can make assumptions here, but I would say that um, this is the region we're concerned with. Go ahead and make the assumption that if they don't specify that the region is going to be within the first quadrant, usually. So if I shrink up these um, lines here, just to really focus on our region that we're concerned with. That'd be right there. And then I'm just going to erase that little bit. So there's y equals x squared, y equals 4, and x equals 0, creating that, that region. We're going to take that region, we're going to rotate it around the y-axis so it creates that, that shape into the quadrant like that, like so. So if we can kind of imagine that. So there's the solid region we're trying to find the area of, or sorry, the volume of. And if you recall back from the first day of instruction on this, um, we wanted to consider a circular cross-section. So we, we took a knife, we sliced this, um, this region somewhere around the middle. doesn't matter where specifically. So if I, let's say, cut it right there. You just imagine the circular region that's created by that. There is a radius that goes from the center of rotation, the axis rotation, out to the edge of the region, and again we highlight the region to, we always want to draw a radius into that region. And what I told you for right now is that radius is either going to be x or y to begin with. Um, so if I'm going horizontally, that radius is going to be x. If I'm rotating around the y-axis, so I want to get a dy integral. So when I draw this circular cross section out here, I don't want to put x is my radius, so I want to put something about y is my radius. And we're going from the axis of rotation out to the blue curve. The blue curve is this function, y equals x squared. 
If y equals x squared, that means x equals either positive the square root of y or x equals negative the square root of y. Take your pick which one it is. It doesn't matter. Uh, I'm going to go with positive the square root of y because we're taking the, we took the region of the first quadrant, right? So that would be the positive square root of y going this way. The negative square root of y goes that way. So again, since we picked the region of that uh, first quadrant, we're going to go with the positive. When I get the area of this, I'm going to square that. So whether it was positive or negative, squaring it, you're going to get a positive, right? So the area of our cross section, again, just this chopped out circle here which with the radius of x, which changes if, if um, I'm here, it's 1. If I'm here, it's 1.5. If I'm here, it's 2. So it's changing. But whatever it is, is what it is. x always equals the square root of y according to our equation. So the area of this thing is always going to be pi times the square root of y squared. So the area of the cross section is just going to be pi y. The bottom of the region is right there, and it's, be, it's going to be at y equals 0. The top is right here, and that's y equals 4. So the circles begin at the bottom at 0, they end at 4. So my integral, my volume, is going to be the integral from 0 to 4 of pi y dy. And as before, I like to take the pi out of the integral, just so I'm just integrating on a letter. Not that having pi there makes it any more difficult, just one less thing to look at while integrating. So, pi is a numerical value pulled out. 0 to 4 is our interval for y, starting at 0, going to 4. And our area of our cross section is y. Okay, so dy. So, the volume is going to be pi times y squared over 2 from 0 to 4. If I put 4 in first, I'm going to get 16 pi over 2. If I put 0 in second, I'm going to get 0. So the answer is 8 pi cubic units. So hopefully, you can see through this example that the technique isn't any really different than it was before. Just a matter of um, you know, figuring out what the area is in terms of the correct letter. If our circles are horizontally positioned, they're going to be moving vertically. So we want everything about y because y is vertical. If the circles are centered, or they're going horizontally, they're going to be moving like this. So I should say if the circles turn vertically, they're going to be moved horizontally. So we want everything about x. So that's the main thing with this is that's how we want to set these up each time in order to be able to work the problems.